and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new episode of today's Youth. And today we will be talking about uh, the strategic significance of Sinai and the development of Sinai. And uh, we will start off with our uh, major reports. Prime Minister Mustafa Medbouli visited the Northern Sinai on Tuesday, during which he met with the head of the Northern Sinai Tribes Union, chiefs and editors and, uh, of Sinai Tribes, as well as a number of uh, media personnel politicians and public figures. Let's have a closer look. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli visited Northern Sinai on Tuesday, during which he met with the head of the North Sinai Tribes Union, chiefs and elders of the Sinai Tribes, as well as a number of media personnel, politicians and public figures. The Prime Minister also laid the foundation stone for the number of urban societies. During his visit to Al Arish at the headquarters of the Battalion 101, Madbouli affirmed that the state would launch the second phase of the Northern Sinai development, in which a strong infrastructure had been laid down there. He said such a strategic decision had been taken to develop Sinai in parallel with combating terrorism. The Prime Minister said Sinai had been a bastion for resistance against aggression attempts against Egypt throughout history. He stressed that liquidating any issue on the expense of Egyptian lands would not be allowed. He said a thousand projects had been implemented on the peninsula with a cost of over 290 billion Egyptian pounds. Adding that 363 billion pound scheme over five years is being implemented. But Bouli said the projects cover many fields including health and higher education. Adding that Northern Sinai residents will be able to find many job opportunities during the next period. The Prime Minister described the volume of projects planned for Northern Sinai as three times that of the High Dam project. Madbouli said uh, 270,000 Fidans are planned uh, for reclamation in Northern Sinai, while 115 billion pounds are allocated to establish 21 housing projects in the area. He noted that an industrial zone is planned for Sinai, including projects worth billions of pounds. According to Madbudi, Northern Sinai is to be the site of international standard tourist projects and would be an investment destination for investors from around the world. He said a road network of the highest standards will be implemented in Sinai. Added that linking Northern Sinai with Egyptian lands everywhere is underway with the aim of aborting any foreign ambitions. Madbudi said Egypt would be an international logistics center with a giant railway network. He also said that Arish port would be developed into an international port with the capacity to compete with other Egyptian ports. The Premier further added that plans are forwarded to establish logistics and free zones in northern Sinai to serve trade movements uh, with neighboring countries and for the area to be a giant investment in industrial and housing center in Egypt. In a press conference in Rafah, Crown Minister Madbouli said Egypt is against any targeting of civilians and added that Egypt is against collective punishment against civilians in Gaza. He reiterated that Egypt is keen to deliver all humanitarian aid to Gaza and the region will not achieve peace without the two-state solution. But Bouli stressed that Egypt would not accept the liquidation of the Palestinian cause at its expense or at that of any other country. He asserted Egypt's total rejection of collective punishment of the Palestinian people, including the residents of the Gaza Strip, asserting that Egypt is in contact at all levels to face the unprecedented humanitarian crisis in Gaza. He confirmed that Egypt would not recede any part of the Sinai Peninsula and is keen on developing it for the sake of the nation. But Bouli said Sinai had witnessed the unprecedented development and investment. The Prime Minister vowed that Egypt would not allow a destabilization of any part of the nation. For their part, the chiefs and elders of Sinai expressed full support for President al-Sisi. The governors of Northern Sinai said the government is keen on developing the peninsula. At a press statement held at the Egyptian side of the Rafah border crossing with Gaza, the Prime Minister called upon all world leaders to denounce targeting civilians, deploring the loss of over 8,500 lives in Gaza due to the Israeli strikes. Madhuri thanked international government and non-government organizations that have sent humanitarian aid to Palestinians in the Strip to enter through the Rafah crossing. Welcome back, dear viewers, and on the significance of uh, the development of Sinai, we're joined over the phone by engineer Mario Ahmed, the expert in petroleum engineering. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mario. Good afternoon, Mary. 
Good afternoon, uh, well, uh, Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli visited the Northern uh, Sinai on Tuesday, uh, during which he met with the head of the Northern uh, Sinai uh, tribes, and uh, uh, he also uh, said that uh, the state would launch the second phase of Northern Sinai development. How do you see the significance of uh, the Prime Minister to uh, Sinai and the development of Sinai area? Um. First of all, thank you for the uh, program, uh, the people, the staff, and the, everything is really fantastic. And I would like you to uh, show the importance of the Premier Minister uh, visit. He has put the base uh, of the community there through his visit. Like he wants to appear like it's more, more uh, civilized person here, and he could. Uh, for the plan for 200, 200 units for uh, accommodation. And also, this is in, in Dora, uh, Sheikh Zawaid, and also for making 830 uh, 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 houses, for like a big one houses for uh, containing 3,370. 3, so this means like uh, it's getting more uh, civilized place. It's not only just because it's the border. No, it's important. It's, it's, it's uh, the protection of the borders of Egypt from the north east. And also, Sinai is full of uh, good things that are bringing uh, the good things for the economy. Like it's one of the main things coming to the economy is the petroleum business there, and also for the mines. And the Sinai now is uh, planning a lot of environmental and developmental projects. And the uh, Premier Minister, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli, could show that uh, his, his admiration for that. And also, he added a lot of things to be put on the plan. Like his visit was not just for Rafah, but for also putting the base for many things to be done in the next period. And he uh, could plan for uh, 114 billion Egyptian pounds to be invested for 35,000 accommodation units. So it's about like he, he is uh, pushing the uh, visit. Also, Sinai is very important because Sinai, uh, the, the, the South Sinai and the North Sinai, Sinai is like South Sinai has 31,000 uh, uh, kilometers square. It's uh, like a 54% of its full of people. And also, uh, it has the manpower for work. And Dr. Mustafa Mandburi uh, confirmed that everything should be done with the hands of the people living in Sinai. Mm -hmm. So this is the contribution for the people living there, and also for hosting the uh, Palestinian, my bro our brothers in Palestine, and also to uh, promote the projects there. Uh, right. Uh, well, uh, the Prime Minister also said that such a strategic decision had been taken to develop Sinai in parallel with uh, combating uh, terrorism. Now, how do you assess the security situation in Sinai? In fact, involving a lot of people in the work is the real uh, facing upon the terrorists. Because if all the people are attracted and working, the manpower is also only... Uh, used by the developmental hands of the terrorists. So you are collecting all the people around you more, uh, see the isolated tribes, the isolated places, and bring them into work as uh, uh, co-workers with you. Uh, it helps them to, in, to help you investigate, control more of the terrorists. Uh, in fact, uh, we see the incidents is no more happening, but also, uh, like, strengthening the security and making the places are more secure. For example, they are giving uh, chances for the students, graduates from the uh, fishing, uh, the fishing uh, farmers. They are making fishing farmers like for uh, bringing up fishing and uh, putting them in the farmers in order to increase the number of it. They are making it for the graduates. And also you now have the universities that are being established. Like these universities will help in the urban the urbanization for the area. Yeah. Uh, the the Barry Lab, the new Barry Lab, is now on 2,700 acres. It will it will it is planned to get 15,000 people uh, living in Barry Lab, 
which is also an isolated area, but now it's urbanized. Uh, like 4,000 uh, accommodation units will be done in Sheikh Zawaid, and also a lot of service communities are now established. If you now go to Sinai, you will find a lot of buildings uh, on construction in a places that you will never expect that the government reach. But now you have the cables of electricity reaching it, the water sources, and you are also seeing uh, uh, excellent urbanization for the area. Right. Well, uh, as uh, for talks uh, regarding uh, liquidating uh, Palestinian uh, issue, how uh, do you uh, ch see the changes uh, uh, to Western statements uh, with regards to this issue following rejection by both sides for uh, resettlement? Uh, Egypt is always opening its hands, really. Like Egypt, uh, through all the ages, are opening its hands for the hosting the people from over the world. Do you look if we look at the Syrian, the Syrian issues? Egypt was the first to host the Syrian people, and now in Palestinian, uh, Rafah is open to receive the Palestinian and uh, the supportive uh, caravans and the supportive things. Uh, it's all organized by the presidential program, by many programs. Uh, yesterday, uh, Mr. Farouk was talking about it. So, and also uh, how to develop more and more. This is how you stand and you show the difference. Like the people are in empathy or against. Now, we are in empathy with the Palestinian uh, issue and we are with them. And we are supporting this. But the priority now is for uh, stopping any kind of treatment towards Egypt. Like Egypt is strong all the, and Egypt show the army uh, strength, uh, strength of its ages. Like if we could see the last video of uh, President Abdel Fattah PC talking and how it will equip it to face anything against Egypt, but we will not attack, we will not initiate any attack. But if there is anything, Egypt is strong and Egypt is well known for strength in the heart of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So. As a, a leading effort, we are opening the hands to the Palestinian people in order to receive them and to support them with all our efforts that we can do. Yes, definitely. We are uh, supporting uh, the Palestinians uh, in all domains. Uh, however, there is, uh, we, we have to affirm the uh, rejection by both sides for resettlement. Uh, now, uh, moving on to talking about the Sinai as a touristic destination, how do you assess uh, the area as a touristic destination? Sinai, the whole of Sinai has the petroleum fields. You have a lot of petroleum companies there that is bringing uh, almost more than 30% of the Egyptian uh, production of uh, petroleum resources. You have the mine there. And also you have the tourism, like all over people. <laughs> for something funny that they tell you Sinai is not perfect or not safe. No, the people from all over the world come to Sharm el Sheikh. And where is Sharm el Sheikh? Sharm el Sheikh is in Sinai. And it's not that far from what we are talking about. It's near. So Egypt is safe. Egypt is keeping safety. Thousands of tourists come every month and leave to their houses safely. And everything is going safe. In the northern part, it's well controlled by the army. And the government now is putting the urbanization. Urbanization means that every part from the South Sinai it will be an urban place. You will have a lot of people. And also the government is encouraging a lot of people to go and live there. Like if you go there, you'll find a lot of uh, increase in the salaries and things in order to work and live there. So this is how the, the, the government is encouraging people uh, and supporting the people to go there and work and live in Sinai, in the south and in the, in the north and everywhere. So this area is also uh, having the Santa Catherine, which is very important, uh, like, uh, 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 religious place that the people can go and, and, and visit. All the people go and visit it. Uh, they have a lot of uh, hotels for like, they have 61 five star hotels and 76 four star hotels and 85 uh, hotels for uh, three, three, three stars. Uh, the, now the, uh, the, the count of the schools in San Sinai only is 348, and in North Sinai it's double or more. Mm -hmm. And the students are increasing 100,000 students in the middle uh, uh, learning life. They're the learning life. We have two faculties, and now they have two in the south, so more than 
five faculties and the universities that are being established. They have the hospitals now are well equipped and uh, uh, the admin building is for the governor are well equipped to, to to and also they are uh, executing a lot of training for the neighbors like they are providing that right. and, yeah uh, right well i would like to thank you very much uh, engineer mario ahmed the expert in uh, petroleum engineering many thanks for your insight and uh, dear viewers with this we come to the end of this edition of today's youth many thanks for watching and stay tuned for more coming up here on Nile tv international